Just outside the small town of Walker in California, USA, a tourist catches a glimpse of a C-130 belonging to the US Forest Service fighting wildfires. The man takes out his camera to record the plane as it flies by. Incredibly, he captures this. Footage of the plane's wings inexplicably detaching from the plane mid-flight. <laughs> It's summertime 2002. Wildfires are raging across Northern California. As part of the efforts to combat the fires, the United States Forest Service flies planes modified for firefighting over affected areas to drop fire retardant. One of these planes was call sign Tanker 130, a Lockheed C-130A Hercules, crewed by pilot Steve Wass, co-pilot Craig LeBaire, and flight engineer Michael Davis. On the 17th of June, Tanker 130 was making its sixth drop of the day, carrying 3,000 gallons of fire retardant to the edge of Walker, California. At 2.45pm, it made an initial spotting pass of the area before looping back to drop off half the load of fire retardant. At the end of the drop, a passerby films the plane. He is only filming for a second when the plane comes apart right before his eyes. The two wings fold up and tear off Tanker 130, sending the fuselage rolling into an inverted position, where it crashed and killed all three on board. What seems like a straightforward story takes a turn when we ask, what happened to this plane? How could the wings just fall off like that? The National Transportation Safety Board launched an investigation and discovered that the three crewmen were the victims of circumstance in a much larger, stranger story. Tanker 130 was originally a US Air Force craft. In fact, it was one of the original 1957 production models of the Lockheed C-130A Hercules. By the time of its crash in 2002, it was 45 years old, and one of the very few original production models still considered airworthy. It saw service in Europe, Southeast Asia, and the Americas. As the US Air Force keeps detailed records on the flight and maintenance history of all its aircraft, this was a good place to start in determining if the plane had any previous issues or just to shed some light on any work that had been done to it over the years that may provide a hint as to what went wrong. What investigators found in this archive was a very unusual and puzzling detail. There was a significant gap in the plane's records. For four years, starting in the late 1960s, there was nothing logged. But the plane hadn't been forgotten about for four years, no. It was released by the US Air Force to a commercial company as part of a program that supposedly partnered with industry. The company that received the plane was the cargo airline Southern Air Transport. The company was based in Miami, Florida and is best known for being a front company for the CIA, which came to light during the Iran-Contra scandal of the 80s when a Southern Air Transport aircraft delivering weapons to rebels was shot down over Nicaragua. What exactly Tanker 130 was used for during its time in Southern Air Transport is unknown. For that four year period, there are no documents detailing its use or maintenance. We don't know if there were any issues or incidents with the plane during this time frame. The plane did return to the Air Force and the maintenance and record keeping resumed. However, this was at a time when units were understaffed and underfunded, so the C-130A did not receive much attention, especially when newer models like the C-130E were arriving on the scene. In the late 70s, Lockheed recommended the replacement of the C-130's center wing box, that is the primary load-carrying structure of the wings. The Air Force followed this advice and replaced the center wing box on the newer models, but not the aging C-130As. By 1988, most of the A models were in the boneyard. Tanker 130 was instead sold as surplus. It was modified for firefighting and operated under contract to the US Forest Service, which is where it received its call sign, Tanker 130. It performed in this role for years without issue until the fatal crash in 2002. The National Transportation Safety Board found that the center wing box had failed, leading to the wings detaching from the fuselage. It was deemed a result of structural fatigue from decades of use. 
The crew were found to be entirely blameless, paying with their lives for the carelessness of others. They were merely unfortunate participants in the final chapter of Tanker 130's long history, probably oblivious to the fact there was an obfuscated part of it in which no one knows how the plane was used, or perhaps misused. Had the CIA put the plane through inordinate stress, overloaded it, pushed it past its limits? It's impossible to say. All we can see for ourselves is the footage, the horrific crash occurring so spontaneously that the crew probably didn't have the time to fully grasp what was happening. The sudden jolt, the loss of control, the violent upside down roll, the shock of what was happening perhaps didn't have sufficient time to subside before the crash, and the realization never had the chance to sink in. A random passerby, from his vantage point, had a much better understanding of what was happening to these men than they did, but was powerless to help or intervene in any way. The most he could do was capture their terrifying last moments. He told me of the danger. An inherently dangerous job just because you're low to the ground, and that makes it a lot worse, but like anything, the goal is to come home every year, and and it's, you know, it's, it's tough conditions, but it's, you know, you just take precautions, that's all. Minutes later, Wass and his crew died as the wings of their nearly 50-year-old aircraft snapped off when they just crashed.